Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Christine. So today we are actually in Seattle. I also have no makeup on because I just got my brows and lashes laminated. I thought I would share a quick little tips video on how to elevate your video content game. So I've been testing out a new camera and I've been using the Nikon Z30. It's what I'm currently filming on right now, but I have another one here to show you. I'm gonna walk you through some of the settings that I use for shooting some of my vlogs, videos. I've been shooting some TikToks on here as well. And these are just like really Really quick settings I'll walk you through some tips that have helped me and some general advice that I have for elevating your video content game whether you're creating on TikTok, Reels, or YouTube. The most common misconception about diving into video content is some people think that they need to have a really expensive camera or gear to get started and honestly when I first started my YouTube channel I just started recording on like my family camera that we've had for years and years and years but if you want a really affordable option I've been loving the Nikon Z30 and that is actually today's sponsor. So I've actually been testing out this camera for a couple of weeks now and I really enjoy it. It's really small and compact as you can see, really great for travel and it does have a retractable lens as well. So if you wanted to take off this lens and replace it with something else, that is really great, especially if you're just getting into videography or photography, it's a great starter camera. Once you get more advanced and you wanna start playing with different lenses and stuff, you can play around with swapping this out for something different. And another thing that I love about this camera is there is a flip screen as well. I've had little compact cameras that don't have a flip screen and this just makes vlogging, recording yourself on the go so much easier. I do have the flip screen open right now so I can see currently like if I'm in focus, how the frame looks. You don't need an expensive camera to get started at all, you can use what you have. But if you're looking for a really good starter camera, I highly recommend the Nikon Z30. I'll go ahead and link it down below and then I'm gonna show you some of the settings that I've been using for this camera as well. I'm in Seattle right now, like I said, and it is freezing. There's literally snow outside right now, so I currently have the heater on, so please excuse if that is noisy. But tip number two that I have is to learn to shoot on manual mode. A lot of the times you can see, sometimes the light will flicker, the lighting situations will change. I think it'll really work to your advantage to learn to shoot in manual mode. Manual mode doesn't mean manual focus. You obviously set your camera to autofocus. So whenever you're doing like product shots, you can have the camera focus on what's going on. But manual mode just allows the lighting to be a little bit more even. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility when it comes to editing as well. And it just looks so much more professional. So this is actually a brand new Nikon Z30 and I haven't done any of the settings for this yet. So I thought it would be the perfect situation to walk you through this. One thing I really like about this camera too it is very user friendly very easy to use and so first we're gonna go into the menu and let's go all the way from the top this camera is great because the quality of it is really nice if you want to shoot photos or videos on it especially when I travel it's nice to have a nice little compact camera that I take for videos and photos something that can do all of that and you can see in the background it gives you that really nice background blur as well so that is a benefit to using you know a little bit more of a professional quality camera first thing that we want to do is go to image quality I always shoot in raw this just makes editing so much easier it gives you so much more flexibility it gives you the highest quality photos as well and then for video recording I just do 14 bit that just gives you the highest quality we can leave all this the focus on the Nikon is really sharp and really, really fast as well. So I just find that the setting works. If you're just taking like photos though and you want it to focus on one area and hold that focus, then you would want single autofocus. But since I use this for photo and video, I'm just gonna leave it on autofocus. The area mode, I just keep to people. I am people. This is for stabilization for when you're vlogging out and about, you want it to be kind of like steadier footage. So we'll just keep it there. Everything else we can leave. Then let's see, to the video recording menu. The frame size, if you wanna shoot in 1080, you can go ahead and just leave it, but I prefer shooting in 4K. It just gives you so much more of a higher quality video. Some of my viewers watch at home on their TVs as well, and the TV really blows up your videos, so I just find 4K is the best quality. I like 30 frames per second. You can play around with it. Some people really like 25 or 24. That gives you a little bit more of a like cinematic, smooth type video, but I like 30 frames. I just find that it's crisp and clean, and if I want to throw any clips into slow motion, I can do that. All of this. Doesn't really matter. 
we're just gonna leave all this as is and then here for autofocus mode for video I'll leave it on full-time autofocus and that just allows you while you're moving around doing product shots vlogging it's just constantly autofocusing all the time which is what you want I always shoot on whatever the frames per second is so we had set this to 30 frames per second so we want to set the shutter speed to one over double of whatever the frames per second is if that makes sense so since we have 30 frames per second we're gonna set our shutter speed to 1 over 60. if you set yours to 24 25 you would have your shutter speed to 1 over 50. also currently have it set to auto mode i'm gonna go ahead and turn this to manual mode you can go ahead and also switch from video to photo mode and it kind of holds your settings that you set for each of that for photo mode we can actually leave it at any shutter speed depending on like if you're shooting Shooting movement stuff like that you usually like to keep that for photos around two or three hundred but video definitely want to keep it to one over 60. there's a little um, exposure button up here if you hold that button down you can turn the dial and kind of play around with how dark or light you like the colors to be and I actually mm. prefer to have it actually up 0.3 if I'm shooting for a TikTok I'll actually take it down to negative 0.3 for a little bit more of a darker moodier aesthetic it seems like for the short videos people kind of like that so we'll just leave it at plus 0.3 for now and these are the settings that I use hopefully that wasn't too confusing that was just a quick little crash course some of the settings that I use for my camera you can actually use those settings for whatever camera you're using as well it's just kind of like general guidelines to help you but obviously if you have the same camera as me you can go ahead and just use the same exact settings that brings us to tip number three so this is something that I actually struggle with a lot this is to keep moving the camera to keep the viewers attention for sit down videos it's a little bit harder because you obviously have the camera set in one place but if you're out vlogging and stuff like that it's nice to move the camera in different angles and it kind of helps to keep the viewer's interest. So for example, we now have the camera in a slightly different location and it just gives the viewers something new to look at. Also, if you watch a lot of YouTube like I do, I've noticed a lot of the YouTube channels that have a lot of views and high engagement, they typically like to add a lot of interesting pops to do quick cuts, quick editing, especially now with the TikTok and reels and shorter videos. People's attention spans are shorter, so you definitely want to cater to that. For me, if I'm doing like a jewelry video or makeup video I'll show different angles I'll crop in the camera a little bit closer I'll add in some product shots I'll do some text overlays and just anything that you can do to help add to the experience for the user and make it feel like you put in that extra effort people always appreciate that I think it's worth the extra effort because it definitely pays off and makes your video look just a step above tip number four is to invest in your camera accessories once you get a little bit more advanced and you start playing around with different tripods mics even if you do a lot of vlogging it's nice to have good travel gear I actually have the creators kit for my Nikon and I do have a mic that's attached to the camera right now so this is what the audio sounds like with the microphone and this is what it sounds like without the microphone especially in bigger rooms and environments sometimes you can hear a lot of background noise echoing back home in my studio it has really high ceilings so there's a lot of echo in there so I'll actually use a little tiny mic that I'll clip on to my shirt as well tiny little improvements that you can do to the camera gear helps to just elevate the viewer experience which is what we want to maximize to up our game anyways as I was saying I have the creators kit for my Nikon Z30 and it comes with this tripod with a remote that is really useful so I can actually use this remote to sync to my camera and I can take pictures I can take videos I can adjust some of the lighting things with this remote control as well and it's really nice if I'm like really far away and I want to do some like really cool cinematic clips I can use my remote to help do some of the clips. If I want to take some of my own pictures, I can use this as a little Bluetooth clicker. It's really handy. I like that it's like part of the tripod because when I'm out and about, I can just clip my camera on here and I have everything that I need. And this tripod is also great because it also doubles as a grip as well. So if you're out and about and vlogging, it's just really easy. And then if you want to set it up on some sort of like counter or something like that and angle it, and then you have your little flip screen and remote. So it's literally everything that you need to do a little hands-free on the go 
video content creation. Last tip that I have is lighting is very important. It definitely needs to be prioritized because if I go to watch someone's video and it's dark, it almost distracts me so much that I can't even watch the actual video. And a lot of the content creators that I really like to watch, they'll play around with editing, lighting, they'll add on some filters for their videos. So it kind of just makes it almost cinematic and fun to watch. So I think good lighting is a bare minimum. For me, most of the time I use natural light. So I am sitting in front of a window right now so it gives me that really nice wash of light it lights up my face and my features and anything that I'm showcasing or holding up it's very easy to see and there's nothing really distracting or taking away from that even if I move over just a touch you can see how much darker the clip gets or if I am backlit you can't see anything you can't see what's going on I would never do a makeup tutorial like this and then even if I go behind this wall back here you could see it's still lit but it isn't as nice and bright as if I were right in front of a window so good lighting always a must I always like to have the source of light right in front of me and I'll set my camera like on windowsills or even on a tripod in front of a window to get that really nice light another hack for me too is if I'm somewhere where it's a little bit darker it is like bright white outside because it's snowing right now in Seattle so we are lucky to have a lot of really good light right now but if I'm in somewhere where the light isn't as bright or the window isn't directly facing sunlight you can always buy additional lighting fixtures or little LED lights on tripods to help add a little bit more light as well you can also buy white reflectors to so go ahead and pop in some pictures of some reflectors that you can buy and I used to buy like white cardboard from like Michaels or something like that like any white White reflector and you can set it up like just sitting or leaning on cabinets next to you and it helps to bounce off that extra light and it just makes such a big difference especially if you're doing a sit down video makeup tutorial even like a fashion outfit try on video it's just always nice to have really good lighting with all of those tips in mind I thought it would be fun to take you behind the scenes take you along on a little bit of a vlog with me today we'll take all of those tips and combine it into a video and you can kind of see what the final product looks like so let's go mm -hmm. 